Oh, guys, I got to tell you, the uh, I thought I was going to make it through these withdrawals, but uh, it's 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 bad. I I figured I'd get some extra last minute Forsaken in before I had to go, but it's just, it's Birds, just not. Why you got to Why you got to travel for work the week after Forsaken? What are you doing to yourself? Oh, take it up with whoever designs fiscal quarters. Am I right? Ugh. Oh, I just I got I got nothing. I got my work laptop here. I could play like. Let's just say Minesweeper on it. I think I got Minesweeper on here, but uh, it's not cutting it. It's not. That won't cut it, birds. But listen to this. What if you could game from anywhere? Enter the Predator Triton 700, a gaming laptop that offers impossible power on the go. Equipped with a 7th gen Intel Core i7 processor and ultra thin 18.9 millimeter chassis. That's sleek, baby. Play Destiny wherever, no matter what weird thing your work makes you do for a week, okay? <sighs> well, okay, I'm interested. How do I do it? Look, you can discover the Predator Triton 700 today. All you got to do is go to Acer.com, click on store, and enter coupon code FRUCIBLE at checkout to receive 10% off. It, it, it <laughs> oh, I'm not joking. Podcast <laughs> in your ears. You want to know what's um really helping me get through these forsaken withdrawals? Is people adding me and going, "Hey, birds, you get the new bow that everyone else has gotten except for you. You got the new exotic bow. It's so great." And I go, "Uh, uh huh. Yeah, no, I don't have it yet, but uh, your, well, your <laughs> your gums are bleeding because you're." <laughs> Just wake up in a panic in the middle of the night because everyone's got an arsenic bite except for me. Well, if it helps, no one's gotten exotics. I've seen like maybe two. I'm pretty sure two exotic dro- drop yeah. since Forsaken for everyone. So, I mean, yeah, if it helps. You asked us to talk to you in the Gambit Man voice while you were away at work. So we've been doing this for the last two hours and hopefully it's helping. I mean, it's it's just, um, it, I'm just living minute to minute here, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I'll be back. I guess it's not going anywhere. <laughs> well, although I, I feel like I'm actually going to miss stuff now, right? Like I miss a bunch of powerful engrams, but like, whatever, I'll catch up or not. It's fine. Um, but I'm having, uh, you know, like maybe the dreaming city, some new things going to happen there. I don't know. Everyone got that arsenic bite at the same day at the same time. Maybe that was a one-time thing I missed on. Never again. What's that, uh, that Weezer song, uh, The World Is Turned and Left Me Here, and here is um, the Midwest without my PC. Wow, that's hurts. truly a nightmare, and I would know. Yeah, that's a good song, but it's not. it's no replacement. Anyways, I'm living vicariously this week. What have I missed? Describe it in detail. Well, this is the perfect podcast to describe said things in detail. It's Crucible Radio. This week we're Gambit Radio. Your source for all things Gambit PVEP Radio. <laughs> PVEP. PVEP. Oh, tier one content. We really said we'd step it up for Forsaken releases. <laughs> <Yep. laughs> we'd really start being on our game. But yeah, I mean, it's been crazy. Uh, I'm. I think we're going to mention it in our interview later with with Paris, who is uh, so kind enough to come back. But like still in that spot, birds, I don't think you have much to worry about where I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what's going on. I don't know how this works. And uh, luckily, we've got some friends with more time on their hands to sort of you say like, oh, yeah, I've done this. Let me show you how it's done. But yeah, bounties do not help my anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> It is terrible to have so many on you. And there's some like, you can't even finish some. Like, oh, you got to do these with your clan. Maybe your clanmates aren't on at the same time you that day. And then it just sits and sits there. And then you can't do it. And then you forget it. Like, you're like oh, I'm going to go do Gambit. And then like Gambit requires some like weird strategy thing that would only work with a team. You don't have your team. And, <laughs> <laughs> Easy. Easy, boss. I like the bounties that I sort of pick up kind of like, 
knowing I'm not going to get around to that, but I'm like, I'll leave it in there just in case it happens spur of the moment, fully knowing I'm not going to do it. And then when they expire, I'm like upset about it. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. I'm like oh, whoa, I guess whoa, I'm not whoa, getting whoa. that Didn't stuff. Didn't I have like six <laughs> bounties here? Where did they go? Yeah. guess I'm not getting those rewards. I will tell you, Crucible ones, real easy. Yeah, they're nice. I like finish them like in like one game. I'm like, oh, wow, oh. I did six. Yeah, that is nice. Oh, I just find myself scrolling through dim, just <laughs> just looking for something to close the gap. Uh, well, Swain, what are the early good roles you've gotten from variety of sources? Well, I've got this really good role on this arsenic bite. <laughs> Come on. Come on. Uh, I've got three of them, actually. They're all the same. I should delete a few. Um, That's how it starts. No, I mean, I, I haven't really been using too many new guns um i got like well like i said I, i've been playing a lot of a fucking lot of gambit um and i use my like uh crooked fang i talked about last week i use that in that i really tend to really like the braytech scout for my energy slot and when you pull it out of your little tip guys we pull it out of your collections tab uh you can delete it and get a free mod component well not free it costs 500 glimmer and some other things but it's almost free and uh (laughs) mod components are hard to come by nowadays so but i like that and it drops when you pull it out of your collection it drops at like your soft cap so i now have a 502 bray tech scout nice i use it with ace of spades because that gun is awesome that's my new gun i like that one it's pretty, pretty absurd. I have a really good role on my Ace of Spades. <laughs> and Bo- yeah. Bones, you were there. I got a uh, Risk Runner Catalyst this week. It's been a good week. Yeah. I may not have gotten any exotics, but I didn't get that. So I got that going for me. Yeah, they're coming. Well, they're coming. not to really upset birds, but yeah, the Arsenic Bite role is fun. I, I, I at- attach myself more to that bow than I have a couple of the other ones. I just like that form better so birds you have something really to look forward to if you already like the first ones so I, i'd like to hear about it a bit in details because this is the faster <laughs> firing me, yes please. spare Sp- no, go slowly spare no detail um no i'm curious about the archetype because this is one of the faster firing archetype bows right yeah yeah it's got a draw time of 660 in as opposed to 760 uh, it doesn't seem like a lot, but it's noticeable because I just got a good roll on a subtle calamity. It's like quick draw, archer's tempo. That's nice. But after using arsenic bite almost two days in a row, I was like, okay, that's different. So you notice that. But the big one is the fact that it comes it apparently locked with this roll, archer's tempo and rampage. Archer's tempo uh, decreases draw time just on a precision hit. So you don't actually have to get a kill, which makes it a really, really nice perk. Uh, And then with Rampage, obviously, we're doing more damage. And because bows are just this great single target weapon where you just, you know, ping them down and you don't have to take multiple shots, Rampage flows amazingly. There's no reload. It's the number one Rampage killer is, well, I got to the end of the Mac, but it's always up if you're hitting little targets. And I mean, I could talk more about this if we get there, but I'm finally unlocking a lot more Well of the Radiance or Well of Radiance subclass where I'm getting empowering melees in the well with Rampage perks. And I realize I'm doing massive damage with this bow and getting a lot of shots off. So it's really, really nice when it starts all working together. And I just think it looks cool. It's that recurve style instead of the compound. It's dope. I got the ornament for it. Yeah, yeah, me too. You know, I, I, I'm i wondering if the ornament helps it take shaders a little bit better because I think that's like, if I had to come up with an objection for some of these bows, it's that the shaders don't usually change sort of the visible part of the bow when you're holding it. Mm-hmm. And when they do, they tend to look like surprisingly flat for some of the spicy shaders putting on it. Uh, side question, am I the only one, and I don't even know if I'm asking you guys, but listeners, am I the only one who hears Del the Funky Homo Sapien every time I look at a subtle calamity and think, <laughs> subtle calamity screen, Sam, <laughs> be another break fan of break. Um, for the arsenic bite, with the faster draw time on it, do you find that changes the equation for what's a one-shot kill or how it feels against Guardians? 
I have not used it much in Crucible yet. Honestly, I've been doing a lot of blind well stuff. I can't answer to it. I should, but I haven't got there, man. Been playing Gambit. I I play a lot of Gambit, but I've also I I actually did play a decent amount of Crucible this week. And I'm a little confused because I'm doing really well and it's never been this consistent that I've done this well. Like dr- drastically. I don't know what's going on and it's kind of scaring me. Uh that I'm I'm actually <laughs> am I good in Crucible now? I don't know. Hey, probably not. You. But the it I really do attribute some of it to like having been in the destiny meta when fusion rifles were their thing like they were they were just part of it that weren't they weren't like meta but having it now and having all these people that just got shotguns back and they don't know how to use them as well and like maybe it's destiny 2 in general like this slower pace of some of the sprinting that they work so they work so well and it's pretty funny to get like a really long distance kill with the air until mm-hmm. um, and just be like, oh, well, that guy was shot trying to shotgun me and he didn't even have a chance. I find the only time I die when I have fusion rifle ammo is like when I'm killing two other people and their friend kills me from the side. But other than that, like I've been like putting up like pretty high kill games, like 30, like almost 40 consistently. And I really attribute it to that and the Ace of Spades. Like, Ace of Spades, it's just so good. It's so good. And it took me a minute to get used to it and to kind of, like, focus on reloading purposely. I reload a lot already, but, like, reloading it after getting a kill, it's just, like, oh, oof. Like, you could just spam it into, like, crowd to get, like, really easy cleanups, mm-hmm. really, like, high number damage. And it's so, it feels so nice. It re- the reload is amazing. I don't know. It, and it feels like the magazine goes on forever. Hey, I'm just so glad that they took what was like a fairly, let's say, niche at best, lackluster gun at worst from D1 and like really turned this into something great. Um, I do not have mine yet. I'm wondering, I mean, how much are you guys really trying to abuse the perks on this one? Are you playing for those those extra damage bullets? Oh, yeah. Because, I mean, if I can get a clean first kill, I will reload immediately. And because it reloads so fast, like, you're and going style. to have those. And you have those, like, the, it's six bullets, right, Bones? The Memento mm-hmm. Mori perk. You have six, and you can switch to another gun and switch back, and you still have the six. As long as you, like... It, you can use those per those bullets until you like unless you die. Like if you die, they go away. But you have those six, so you can kind of move about the map. Like maybe do some fusion rifle kills, maybe use your power, and then be like, okay, well, I, I got those like loaded bullets still. Let me use those in the right situation. So it doesn't feel like pressure to kind of use them right away. Where it's like other perks, like you, oh, I got kill clip. I've got what six seconds to use this right now let me go push into a situation whereas this is you can kind of like set up your situation kind of get into a right area where it works really well you don't have to like really push the range on it you can like oh yeah i'm gonna move up and find the appropriate range for this gun it's really like it feels i don't know it's like to me it feels like the best gun in destiny yeah no question i think one of the underrated strengths of the weapon is is the fact that it, you know, remains your your perk remains. You're not um, procking it and then needing to use it right away. But I think one of the strongest weapon uh, traits in in year one in the year one meta was uh, large mag sizes, and thirteen is pretty incredible. And reloading and knowing that almost half of that is higher damage, and you know that you still have shots. Uh, to just sort of shoot into cleanups and just try to get crowd damage is, uh, you know, amazing. I mean, and I and I find myself still even now noticing when guns uh, have that weakness. For example, people are getting really great rolls on the Duke, but it's got like seven in the mag. And if you can't 
get a nice reload. You really, you really spend your time out of the fight or, or waiting to get back into it. And with 13 in the mag, plus half of it being strong, you know, Ace of Spades has an amazing uptime. You're always ready with it. I actually see that as a weakness on stuff like the broadsword, which is, uh, you know, absolutely destructive at range once the proc is is there. But in terms of just getting that first play, you often find yourself low on ammo and anything in Destiny now that has a large mag size or a really fast reload uh, becomes automatically very, very strong. I think even above just placing full priority on something with kill clip or or just rampage and stuff like that. Speaking of really good hand cannons, have either of you watched uh, gameplay of either Luna's How or Not Forgotten? Yes. Pretty nasty. Uh, it is. Yeah. I watched Cami uh, play with it, and it is disgusting. Bones, how do you feel about the grind towards those rewards this season? I think nothing feels better than just starting matches faster in comp. I've played yeah. a few games and I was shocked. I was alt tabbed reading some article or whatever. And I'm like, what? I didn't even see what map we're on. Like just <laughs> in games as it normally should be is incredible. Um, played solo and found only solo players on my team versus four stacks, which is still going to mean go in with a team at all times and don't rely on rando teammates because you will find yourself going, what are you doing? As they <laughs> don't go to defuse a bomb or something like that. Um, but overall, I think comp is a lot healthier. I whew, Clash control in there. Great. Good additions. It's just like old quick play. There's nothing too crazy. You know how it works. It's really fun. Does it help break help break up like the moments where you're like this is super try hard? It does. And then it like goes into like oh this is like this is like having like a moment and you switch to quick play to kind of decompress for a second. I'm groaning like, oh, wow. because that was really crazy. Countdown is such a momentum killer coming out of a clash game. I played clash. I had a great first game of comp and I went into countdown and I was like woof like it is just you know, like. You're running, you're jogging, you're jogging, and then you hit con wet concrete and your feet go in it. And it doesn't mean it's bad or like you can't play it. You just like the, the mental shift from those two game modes is huge. And I feel like it really just made me like slow down. And, and that's where I started to go like, oh, like this is why I need a team. Um, but I, whatever. Yeah, the, the variety makes it uh, a much better place to be. I think more people will play and the matchmaking time is such a great fix. What about the... Uh what about like penalties for, for losing? Like, how are you feeling about like, uh, there's not, I mean, isn't there not a, there's not a, as punishing of a, it kind of, I don't know. I mean, it kind of doesn't, I can't notice it yet. The loss streak was weird, but I mean, mm. it all, that all comes back into like, is this a ranked thing or is this just a grindy thing? And, it really is more of a grindy thing, so I don't really know how it should work. Um, but mm, the lost streak wasn't the worst thing in the world. Basically, if you were really just doing bad, which you you know maybe you should have just you know stopped playing or come back with it at a different time. Uh, it, it, it eased the pain, and you went down less by less and less, which is good. Now you just flat lose, which can maybe be harsh if you lose a few in a row. So I don't know. I, I need to play more and see how it feels over. A thousand points gained. Uh, what what really felt good about that or not? Once I'm I'm still sitting at about three fifty right now. So as I get more more time to play comp, which I which I plan to soon, uh, I'll know more about that. But matchmaking really big fix, and I love the addition of the new new modes. It really has me interested this season to kind of. I love those that archetype of uh, hand cannon, and I like have excelled with it in the past. So I just want it because I want to add it to my, my arsenal. Yeah. And I think with the, you know, with the quest, you still have to hit 2100, but it's doable. I feel like there's more time to do it just because you spend less time in orbit. You literally can play twice as much almost. Uh, <laughs> so absolutely there is, it feels like there's more time to do it. And I think maybe already that makes me go like, all right, cool. I can you know grind for this raid or whatever. And I'm not rushing to it, even though plenty of guys have already jumped right in there and gotten 
already to legend and stuff like that. It's crazy. <laughs> That's a lot of commitment. Yeah, Ace of Spades is your best friend for that because you require a lot of head ca- uh, headshots with with hand cannons, I believe. So, so definitely keep that one in your roster. Good thing I love that gun. Yeah, I will say, oh, just in general, the number one thing slowing me down in the Crucible, and I think that's why I'm so happy to just play a lot of PVE and Gambit right now, is that I don't have those perfect options because of the new weapon system and because I'm not really choosing to use any old guns. Uh, I, I I don't have any year one guns on my warlock now that I'm looking through my inventory besides sleeper, which I'm not really using. So it's interesting. I I have a very new loadout, but that just means when I have ace of spades, I don't have the perfect shotgun in my energy. So I use a bow and then I wish I had a power weapon on me at the time or or, or special, whatever. Uh, But yeah, so I'm still figuring out the kinks of my, of my loadout options and that's making me a little hesitant to just go slay in the crucible. So as I get the good stuff, yeah. it'll feel better. Yeah, that's another time for pretty much the PSA I said earlier, but like I've had so many people forget it and not realize it so far in like on Twitter in my mentions. You can pull these guns out of your collections from the like from year one. So say you dismantled something because you wanted to get the masterwork cores or what whatever. Um, it's not gone forever hmm. unless it's one of these new guns in year two. The year two stuff, you get what you get. You got to keep it if you want to keep it forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, year one stuff, different story. You can pull it out of your collection. You can use it right away. Um, I've been telling that with people like, oh, I deleted my Aaron Till or I got one. I you know never thought to use it. It's there. Just go and pull <laughs> it out. Yeah, I could say uh, it took me. Oh, I'd say a solid 10 minutes or so to figure out where those collections are. Like I'm running around the tower. I'm checking the vault. I'm like, did they hide the kiosk? Where's this shit? They promised me my shit. Oh, oh, this is embarrassing. Um, I have got to say, like, they that that's a whole quality of life thing that I just, um, I didn't even realize that's how they were going to do it. I did not pay close enough attention when they were showing this stuff it's, off. It's like... It's surprising that it's that good and so accessible. Right, like right. it feels like it shouldn't be. Like I feel like I should have to go to it. It's tower. some next gen game stuff for me, honestly. Mm-hmm. It's like, oh yes, this is the future, <laughs> or has, or as it should be. And I'm not playing on PS4 uh, hardware anymore. Yeah, everything's at my fingertips. <laughs> You know, like I, I, I understand when it's like, OK, well, I want to go pick up some bounties. I need to go fly to the place and see the person about getting the bounties. But like shaders, just give me the shader. Just I just just give it to me. I, I don't need to go to the shader wizard and complete the shader quest for <laughs> shader access. If they would just speed up the uh, acquire on the shader. I don't know why they went with the super long dismantle exotic timer on shaders from the collection but uh you know i shouldn't complain yeah i can't, i'm with you there there's a weird there's still some kinks in this new economy while it's so much better i'm always just like oof like <laughs> why make this any more difficult than it needs to be or i guess i'm just going to buy it instead of going out in the world to get it because that feels ridiculous there's i would like to like the only thing with shaders i would love to be able to be like here's all of the ones i've gotten and be able to pay for it like from the gun. Like, hey, I'm gonna put the shader on this gun. I scroll through all of the ones I've ever gotten I and see, like but, pay for it there. See, I have a different thought on this because out of all the shaders I've ever gotten, I'd say 60% of them are to me personally, I believe, total dookie. Mm-hmm. I don't wanna see them. So what I did <laughs> yeah. was I dismantled <laughs> all of them. And then I just went through all the ones I'd ever seen and made sure I had at least like two or three of the real snazzy ones. And I've got like three, three and a half rows of shaders. And uh, and that's nice. I just make sure that like, personally, this is my size. I just make sure I never run out of one just so I don't have to keep track of which ones I thought were good. Sort of have that stacked I, up. I would do the same, but I have like moments where I find like, oh, this weird ass shader works really well on this That's one true. gun. That's true. And I would have never have known if I didn't have it on me for some. There you reason. go. Yeah, you're trying to set the syntheseps off and forget what <laughs> random planetary shader. I ended up with like this weird purpley and white shader on my uh, Titan. And I'm like, oh, wow, this is 
Oh wait, it is the future work cult one from oh, yeah. I think the last one. I just and it was like, oh wow, this works great. I just spend a little bit, you know, putting on a set and going through all the shaders and hitting preview, and you can do that in the collections now, which is beautiful. Yeah, yeah, I like okay. I like doing. And then that. I just go with but. the the two most recent raid ones from the prestige <laughs> layers, and <laughs> those are the best, and always will be. There you mm. go. I uh, I do have to say, Bonesy, I took your advice to heart. Um, my vault is immaculate. <laughs> um, first off, so many gunsmith materials. Um, but just and masterwork cores and masterwork cores. Although honestly, I'd I'd pretty much narrowed it down already to just the masterworks that have got uh, sentimental value to me. Um, so not a ton there, but um, yeah. And and I would recommend this for anyone, not just because it's nice to. Uh, clean house know that you've only got stuff in there that you like but also because i made the call as i'm sort of grinding out some of these legendaries trying to figure out what role i like uh if i don't immediately want to use a role i'm almost definitely just going to throw it into the vault unless i know that it's it's one where i've i've got the better role that i prefer um so i've got like four trackless waste in my vault but i can say under 400 power only good year one stuff i would actually consider using again or can't bear to throw out um but just like cleaning out all that armor that i was holding on to mm. <laughs> what, what, what was i oh, holding that on feels to really that good stuff? Ugh, i haven't armor done going away i've only done my titan and i'm down to like two or three pieces on um on my character and then just you know the rolls starting to stack up in the vault for what i haven't figured out yet um, i seriously thought the the collections were going to be weren't going to include like white and blue armor I was like, oh, yeah. wow, I can even delete this like damaged one I got from the first mission that holds a little bit of sentimental. That's it. Yeah, I've, I've had I've had. um, Yeah, just like that first uh, burnt up Frumius cloak that I've been holding on to for, I don't know, literally months that I've <laughs> never once worn outside of the first time I got it. I went, oh, that looks cool. And uh, yeah, it's just gone. Don't need it. Yeah, I got my vault down to one page, 50 items. Beautiful. Proud of that. And I can and yeah, I Destiny One still have lower. Yeah, I could use the <laughs> Destiny One vault. Challenge me. I dare me. <laughs> um, all right. Well, Swain, we, we we heard from you, Bonesy. Did you have any uh, any new roles? Maybe not the new new hotness, but any any fun new stuff that you've been. Yo, trying what's the role in your arsenic? But oh, dude, I actually do have the new hotness. It's actually uh, it got pretty popular on the playbook, and I was looking at it. I was like, all right, I'll keep my out. I know I have a few of those. I'll keep my eye out. But I have a great go figure the new aggressive four burst pulse rifle and i've got outlaw head seeker and a counterbalance stock mod on it Ooh. fully master worked with reload speed nasty that is a fun gun and it's absolutely um absolutely correct if someone tells you this needs needs a stability mod on it and i was so lucky to look and see that i had something with counterbalance that i had deleted or whatever and so I put it on there and it, it makes a big difference and it really, really locks in those two bursts and you hit straight up and down. It, it feels like a, a destiny one move of like slapping some counterbalance on there. Uh, but that one's nasty and it's honestly tough sometimes for me to choose go figure or broadsword if I want that range weapon. It's probably my go to rangey weapon right now. It's very, very cool. Uh, I found myself using, um, God, I'm looking at all my go figures right now. What's this? Kill clip and moving target. I guess that's okay. We'll see. Not gonna master work that. Yeah, the head seeker is, I believe, the the key there to the consistent two burst because of the boosted gotcha. damage. But yeah, uh, there, I know that there's a lot of good options. I, you know, we talked about that last week. One of our first impressions was that most perk choices seem appealing and could be appealing to different people. So I think you know modes of that gun will still be strong. Yep. Um, I did. Uh, I did get one. Role. I find myself using a lot of um, not as good as my current stuff roles just because like, ooh, I got the the Dreaming City rocket launcher. I don't care if it has a terrible role on it. It looks cool. We're going to rock this for a bit. Um, but I did have a Duke drop with the combo that I love so much on uh, on my judgment in vanilla, which was uh, moving target and opening shot. So you get that improved accuracy on the first shot and then the improved uh uh, aim assist, aiming down sights. Um, yeah, and you know, like I know, I know kill clip, I know rampage are the hotness. Um, this one's got the ricochet rounds on it. I just found it 
disgustingly sticky. Um, just very, very consistent getting those taps. I will say, um, nice to play it with the, the uh, what you call it, the missile titan, where you can slide over your ammo to reload it, because that is the only way I want to reload this gun. Just a uh, <laughs> regular reload, not, not as appealing. All right, well, you tuned in to hear us talk about Gambit, and we are going to talk about Gambit, and we're going to talk about it with none other than Paris himself from Gamertag Radio. Uh, but before we do that, we got to give one more shout out to our sponsor this week. Uh, that's going to be Acer. Here's the thing to be the best, you need the best. And this is true, right? You're not getting those frame rates, you're not getting that field of view, you're at a disadvantage. Uh, so do yourself a favor, level up on the go with hardware that's as versatile as it is strong, the Predator Triton 700. Mentioned it already, folks, with a CPU that packs a punch, it's got the 7th gen Intel Core i7 processor, puts it to the test. You can fully immerse yourself in the game with a design so sleek you forget it's there and experience tear-free gaming with the purest FPS, courtesy of NVIDIA GeForce Tech, so you can focus on becoming the best. Thinner, faster, quieter. Say hello to the Predator Triton 700. You know, birds, you travel a lot. I wish I, I had know, an excuse I, to just like play I wherever. Want one of these. I want to like. I feel like I could justify it with the travel case, but I would <laughs> yeah. also just do a lot of like, I'm going to go travel to the living room and play <laughs> on my sweet laptop. <laughs> oh, the bonding I could <sighs> do with my girlfriend when she doesn't like that I'm just up here in the office all day, all night. Thanks for saking. There you go. I can go, uh, uh-huh, uh-huh. No, I'm, I'm, I'm in the middle of a game. I can't pause <laughs> it. Yeah, From no, yes. any room in the house. I wonder if, oh, I got to hit up Acer, see if they're going to hook one of these up. But if that doesn't come through, you and me and all of us, we can. Most likely you. <laughs> yeah, right. Let's let's be honest. Um, you can go to Acer.com, click on store, and enter coupon code CRUCIBLE at checkout to receive 10% off. That's Acer.com, enter code CRUCIBLE for 10% off. All right. Well, we got to talk about Gambit. This is uh, probably safe to say not going to be the last time we're talking about Gambit on this show. Hell no. Uh but we got some professional assistance <laughs> this week. So uh, how about we uh, how about we have a little interview? Have a little chat. All right, all right, all, all right, right, all right, right, all right, all right. First, we're gonna need a musical break. Well, no, how, how would he say it? That that doesn't count, Andrew. Don't you drop it yet? Hey, other team, you suck. Have a musical break. Welcome back to the show, everyone. It's that part of the show where we bring a guest on. You may remember this. We've done it before. And uh, we're doing it again this time for this very special Gambit episode. I'd like to welcome back Paris. Welcome. Hey, from. Hey, thank you for having me. You want to tell them where you're from? Yes. I feel like I should have, I should have thrown that in there. <laughs> I'm from the internet. No, I'm from uh, Gamertag Radio. Yeah, they don't let me do this much. We so. made you say it this time because last time I said you were from Gamergate Radio and I'll never yeah. live it down. <laughs> <laughs> it's got a ring to it, but not quite the same. My lowest moment on this show. Anyways. Bones likes to relive his terrible moments. Yeah, just get it all out there. Um, I want to start by asking you uh, a question that you've already been asked on Twitter. Why do you even like Destiny still? <laughs> That's that's a great question, man. <laughs> I I am so invested into this game. I, I mean, what have we been playing this since 2014, right? Destiny, more like invest me. Yeah, <laughs> something like I'm that. sorry. No, I'm sorry. I, I mean to do that. Yeah. <laughs> no, nah, but I mean, you know, all, all jokes aside, I mean, it's just been one of those things of number one, the people like like yourselves. Just it's an amazing community of people, and there's been some of the highest of the highs. And then, yeah, maybe last year there were there were some lows <laughs> as well. But, um, you know, you, you try to stick through it because I was pretty confident that they were going to fix it. I knew it was going to take until this expansion to truly fix what they launched with Destiny 2. And uh, I think they have. 
So mm. yeah, to, to answer your question, yeah, I literally have had people over the past two weeks because <laughs> I just been tweeting about Gambit every day. Um, yeah. <laughs> can you stop tweeting so much about Destiny? It's like, God, why don't you talk? Why don't you play another game? But it's like, dude, I'm enjoying it. Of course, I'm going to talk about it. I'm excited about it. I'm I'm happy that we like this game was legitimately in trouble probably six months ago, right? Like, mm-hmm. oh my God, the community's leaving. What's what's going to happen? And they rebounded. They really did in a big way. And I I, I think what we have on our hands right now is the best that destiny has ever been. And that's, that's a great thing. Agreed. The hard part about that is like being able to rebound that quick with something so amazing is, is like, I don't think they get enough credit. Like they get a lot of credit (laughs) currently, but they really don't get enough credit for how much went into like making this game as amazing as it is right now. Um, And (laughs) not just like, fixing what needed to be fixed they threw in an amazing game mode like gambit in there mm-hmm. i feel like it was like maybe they had that like in the back of their pockets they're like we got this great idea if we ever need to really hit a home run let's throw this in. <laughs> yeah they're like yeah let's let's do it now we need it well what's been um taking your interest i mean aside from gambit like there's so much to explore what have you found maybe surprising or new and exciting uh, that's that's just really had you obsessed with this game versus playing everything else this week. Well, I, I was telling the buddy this the other day. What what I've realized with Forsaken bringing in those those daily bounties and the weekly bounties and the challenges and attaching the powerful engram to, to certain ones. I feel mm. like if I don't check in every day, I'm missing out on something. <laughs> and I th- and I think that's the best thing that they did because you know previously all right, here's the roadmap. Here's what I have for this week. Knock it out in the first day or two. And then you literally don't need to come back again until next week. Whereas now they've made it that there's always something popping up. Like when I logged in earlier, I noticed there was a heroic adventure with a powerful engram on Nessus as as a daily adventure challenge or whatever it's called. And that's something that wasn't there yesterday. I find with with the daily bounties, you, you know, there's random ones that will give you a particular drop. And then you throw in the Dreaming City and there's all these secrets that we've still not uncovered yet that I feel like <laughs> just exploring that area, I'm, I potentially could find something new. Like I find myself looking at a ledge and it looks like, wait, can I jump on that? I think I can jump on that. <laughs> let, me, let me try that out and see where it goes. So, yeah, it's... It, it's it, the thing that I've been tweeting about and probably pestering Deej to the point that he's going to block me on Twitter is <laughs> I want the investment hobby to come back. That's kind of the biggest thing that that I saw with, that was lacking with the launch of Vanilla Destiny 2 is. And I thought they were really building up to that at the at the end of Destiny 1 is, you know, the, it's not just a game anymore, you know, for the quote unquote hardcore people you're truly invested into it. And and there's like this economy and there's, there's these milestones that you're, you're constantly chasing something. And I feel like mm-hmm. with Forsaken, they're getting back to that where there's gear and weapons and exotics out there that I will have to chase. They're not just going to be handed to me, you know, like I got third place in soccer or something. They just give you the participation <laughs> trophy. You know, I have to go out and earn it. I have to go find it or I have to cheat and go on Reddit and go, hey, guys, do you know where I can get this? You know, it's like one of those things. But um, I, it's it's good. It's It's really good. It's kind of when I thought about Destiny two years ago and where I wanted it to be, this is kind of it. You know, and, mm-hmm. I, and like I said, I thought at the end of Destiny 1, they were really progressing to that. Then they stripped it all out and were like, what the hell happened? And now they're they're getting back to it again. And and I'll say one thing, because I know I'm, I'm talking too much at this point. Um, the weapon slot changes. It was nice that they didn't just revert back to Destiny 1 with the weapon slot changes. They did it. In a, in a, they did it in, a, in an advanced way, so you can play around with these different combinations now, and it it just adds to the gameplay. Not to mention random rolls are back, and just the way all that's happening. The new mod system, which I, I've not applied one mod yet, I, I'm just <laughs> storing them. You know, like like I'm storing for winter or something, like I'm a squirrel, but because I don't know what to do yet, so I'm like I'm just gonna keep them all. Once I figure out the guns and the armor and everything that I truly like, then I'll go ahead and start applying them and get my loadouts and all that stuff. My Titan is butt ugly right now. I'm waiting. <laughs> like I, I don't want to put a mod on anything because I don't want to yeah. infuse it. And I also really am not sure what I want yet. So everything is going to just be on the wayside until and probably after the raid. 
Give me yeah, some nice raid stuff. Yeah, seriously. I feel like I'm at that point where I get an armor drop and I go like, oh, well, these are some interesting perks, but are these the best perks I can get on armor? Or like, what perks can you get on armor? And realizing like, I have... I have no idea. I've seen like the reloaders. I've seen what I've seen, but just not knowing what's capable out of this gear. Um, and I, I like your point that, you know, I felt like in a lot of D1, like that sort of week after week grind was kind of there, but a lot of it was just like, you better like the game. And then in the beginning of D2, it's like, okay, well, this is my weekly homework. I got to do it on all my characters, check all these boxes, get my precious uh, powerful engrams. And now it's like, I don't even, I don't even know what I'm supposed to be doing right now. (laughs) All of this is useful. And (laughs) I am also in the dreaming city looking at that, that little ledge going like, I know I've got things to do right now, but maybe I could get up there. Maybe there's something up there. (laughs) So I, I, I do want to get into Gambit. I think we're getting pretty close. But, um, you know, there's a lot to explore in this between, you know, all the PV stuff, um, you know, the new subclasses. What's kind of been your your focus so far? You know, what what weapons have been, you've been going for? Which of the new subclasses have you tried and what do you like? Uh, I've been running my Titan. I've not even touched my Warlock yet. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But I, I've only unlocked the one uh, new subclass. I, I did the did the hammers. Well, no, I, I should take that back. I did the, the new Superman arc. I fly through the air and then I've, I just got to yeah. see, see the light a few days ago and I unlocked the, uh, the solar with, with the spinning hammer, which I really love, especially in Gambit because I just run right into the middle with the boss and I just start spinning it, you know, the DPS. And, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I've done that, done a lot of blinding. Well, um, tier two, um, I, I got one tier three clear so far and it was, uh, those hammers are perfect for blind. Well, oh it's yeah. Hilarious. Yeah. Yeah. They totally <laughs> are. Totally. Uh, but a lot of that, just kind of doing like some of the, you know, I did the um, Ascendant Challenge. Um, I've done the, you know, the the weekly Wanted Bounties. And then just Gambit, man. Like, it, it's funny. I'm on Crucible Radio. I barely touch Crucible <laughs> since yeah, I've was, played. I think I was, I've done it a few times just to get the powerful engram, and that's about <laughs> it. Yeah. I was going to ask, like, as far as Destiny is concerned, like, PvP, does that, like... Has that been a draw for you at all? Like, I mean, it, it ends up being the draw for most people when the content runs a little dry. But uh, I feel like we've had we had you on to talk about the raid before and PVE is like PVE. What drew you to the side of Gambit? No, I, I actually it's kind of like you're saying I play PVP a lot. Uh, it, it's funny. I'll, I'll tell the story real quick. Uh, one of my, my good friends, um, I was running Graviton Lance. And we're playing together and he goes, hey, bro, why are you using those training wheels? And I was like, what are you talking about? He goes, Graviton Lens. Those are training wheels. I have not used it since. He said that he shamed me out of using Graviton Lens forever. But no, I actually love playing uh, PvP. It's just been with Forsaken that, you know, obviously all these secrets and just not knowing what to do next. I've just been trying to figure out what do I want to focus on? I almost feel like PVP is going to be there when it gets slow. Obviously iron banners coming next week. I'll jump into stuff like that, but you know, Mm -hmm. I want to figure out this, this dreaming city. I've really been grinding gambit and uh, you know, obviously the raids coming up. So I almost want to, let's get the PVE stuff out of the way. And then I'll, I'll do more PVP during the quote unquote slow times. But to answer your gamut question, it was that combination of, all right, I know I love PVE stuff, um, but I love that thrill as well of invading, you know, and then when someone invades mm-hmm. us, you know, coming up with a strategy for trying to take them down quickly. So it's really a combination of both modes, which I think gamut, and I know we're going to talk about gamut more, but just it was, it's almost that perfect blend of the two, which brings both sides together, which I think in turn will get those PV, PVE only people to want to go jump in and try PVP and vice versa. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feel, like I've said it before, but it feels like I didn't know this is what I needed before, Yeah, but it feels like the perfect Destiny activity. Like it throws it all together in one little tight little package and it it has so much potential in my opinion. Like it's, it's got so much legs to be something like it's great. Now it could be even greater. Like oh, I a hundred percent agree. Hundred As they iterate agree. on it. Yep. Yeah. What, what other game could do a mode like Gambit quite like how destiny has done it? I think halo could <laughs> potentially again, another bungee game, obviously I think halo has the, 
has the what am I looking for? It has it, it, it has the the world, the environment to be able to pull something like that off. Cause I could yeah. totally see, you know, getting waves of grunts coming in and elites and things like that. And uh, you know, you have to fight them off, but then, you know, you come in and invade as well as a Spartan. So I, I, I could, I could see them doing it as well. There's nothing better than the feel of destiny guns though. Like no other <laughs> yeah. game has like given me that, like that feel. Well, that's kind of the thing with, for me anyways, which keeps me with Destiny is the variety of weapons. And just now, especially now that we have random rolls, no one gun is going to be for everyone, I think. <clears throat> Excuse me. People are always going to have their favorites. Whereas I bring up Halo as an example, you know, you, you're going to default to what about four or five different type of guns and that's it. Everyone's running that, right? Whereas in this one, especially like in Gambit, I'm constantly tinkering with my loadout trying to figure out what's best for what enemy type what's going to be best for taking down the prime evil things like that and it's it's very hard to get that type of variety in other in other sh- quote unquote shooter games i think mm-hmm. anyways mm-hmm. well I, I guess along those lines i mean we've been trying a lot of stuff out we've had some fresh drops we've had a couple carryovers from uh from uh, D2 before Forsaken, what are you using right now? What's been working for you? You, you know, and, and, and again, I, I talk about having the Gambit load out. You know, me and my buddies, I, I joke around. I go, depending on the, the enemy, I go, all right, give me my Gambit suit. What Gambit suit am I going to put on? So, like, for the Fallen, as an example, I'd like to use Go Figure, and I'll, I'll have Risk Runner. Um, because you, you, oh, yeah. you just you oh, just yeah. chain through that. Just I just shreds. rip through them, and I actually run a grenade launcher. Um, I, I I typically try and run like play of the game, and then uh, or if I don't do or if I don't do wrist runner, I'll, I'll run a bow. But I I like that. And then the armor set, I just try and perk out for what for whatever weapon. So I try and make sure you know you know it, grenade launcher, scavenger, or or heavy ammo drop, special, drop, you know, et cetera, things like that. So I can constantly make sure I'm picking up weapons, especially with the, finding the heavy ammo. That way I don't have to depend on grabbing the heavy ammo, you know, in the middle. I can leave that for someone else. I feel else. like that's a, a good clutch for, like, having it there is good for, like, oh, your invader may be focusing on other things. It yeah. may not even be involved in, like, up-close ad clearing. Yep. But they still have the chance to get like heavy ammo. Yeah, agreed, agreed. And then um, the the other combo I use, I I've been using that go figure pretty much as my kinetic, you know, in that slot. But like I said, depending on the enemy, like if it's the hive, I'm, I'm pulling out a bow every time with with the explosive head on it. Um, the the what, I never say their names right, but the 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 scorn, the scourge, what, what the hell are they called? The scorn. Scorn, yeah, scorn yeah. thank you. God, I always screw that up. <laughs> the screams. That, th- they're the <laughs> ones that I've really been trying to trying to figure out what to use best. I, I've actually been running a hand cannon in the energy slot, like using trust or something like mm-hmm. that. Um, I've been using the gambit uh, rocket launcher, bad omens, or like I said, a grenade launcher. What I am purposely trying not to do is run sleeper. And I'm, I'm and being <laughs> on here, I, I'm so curious to hear your guys' opinion on this because, yeah, it, it it's to me it should be in gambit i'm not saying don't take it out but i almost feel like can they just limit it to two shots something like that you, you know i almost feel like it's we I've, we go up against some opposing teams and they're all just running sleeper and you know they come in and invade they don't even move from the spawn point and they're literally body shotting me from across the map and you <laughs> die and it just doesn't feel like a challenge you know what I mean? It's like it kind of takes a, yeah. takes away the fun a little bit. So I almost wish they would do something with it, not completely get rid of it, but just just nerf the ammo or something. Yeah, because like Gambit makes it difficult to think about changes and like theorize like what you would want to see, not nerfed, but changed in general, because it it's it's in both modes. It's it's a PvP PVE mode, and like do you would that mess up PVP with that gun? Will it mess up like just straight up PVE in that gun? Um, I would like, I don't don't know if it's possible, but like being able to limit it to one person in a group would be nice. Uh, I don't know. I don't know what the the solution is. Yeah. That's the thing. They've been pretty good at finding solutions. So maybe they will. Yeah. It is pretty good. 
I have, I have the hot <laughs> takes on Sleeper, but no, there, no one's asking me right now. <laughs> no, please, please, Bones. I uh, want to know your hot take. Andrew, can I get a hot take? <laughs> All the invasions I've had when Sleeper didn't kill someone instantly have been infinitely more interesting. And that's it. There you go. Yeah, I mean, that seems... Well, well that's it. I mean, that's, that's literally yeah. it. It, it, it <laughs> makes it more interesting. It doesn't even have to be that spicy. It's just, yeah, you don't have to delete someone the first second. And even, you know, I even feel better if I hit a six snipe because I'm not... You know, like I'm not the sniper I was in D1. So it's cool to hit this precision shot and go like, wow, I really nailed him and they'll know it versus, yeah, I used, I used the obvious choice there. But yeah, I've been, I've been doing the same. I've been switching up my loadouts and it feels fun to just try other stuff. I have that nasty tracking rocket launcher now that feels, you know, as fun as anything else now. I would say for me, when it comes to sleeper, it's not so much about deleting other guardians because yeah, it does it. It does it pretty easily. Um, I feel like I, well, me personally, I have way more fun invading with something that takes at least the, I have to hit headshots with like mm-hmm. going in and hitting a headshot on a linear is different than like just bodying someone with sleeper. Mm-hmm. It's, it's more f- unfun for me when they're killing their primeval super fast with it. And it's like, I would much rather, I can avoid them in some way when it comes to invasions and not getting killed with it. But it really like gets me like mad <laughs> when, when it, when they're like, all right, they, pro- they see they got their prime evil out and we don't even have a chance to counter it because they just burn it like completely down using sleeper. So that's what I don't mind getting killed by it every once in a while. Okay. I'm sure as hell know how to avoid it in some way, but the, primeval shit well that's a good uh, me angry. that's a good topic to shift to because wait hold on hold on i don't get a uh, sleeper take <laughs> um let me let me throw this out i've got a uh, a two second moral framework for uh for whether or not it's okay to use sleeper if you're solo queuing and it might all come down to you to do the work then yeah okay it's fine uh, if you got a full fire team, there's so many ways to invade. <laughs> there's so many ways to melt that boss that don't require sleeper. Come on, mix it up a little bit. It's boring. Don't be boring. Don't be boring. Don't be boring. That's good. But yeah, you know, we're talking about the primeval. We haven't even got there. Um, Paris, do you find yourself or your team focusing on any strategies for that? Or do you have like a PVE approach where you're going like, let's, you know, kill the enemies faster? Or do you maybe aim your loadout towards invading and stuff like that like how do you balance those two when you're when you're choosing your gear and strategy well when it comes to the primeval it, itself okay so so when the the typical running the four fire teams usually myself my son a uh, couple of a couple of my yeah i think you guys know like like k-dub and and uh you know mark yeah. regarding radio and all, all those guys so i'm usually running with with that crew and yeah we try to have like all right a couple designated invaders and then a a, a designated moat getter and then you know <laughs> someone else that is kind of a hybrid of of the two that potentially could in, invade scrapping moats etc but when it comes to the primeval you know we try and coordinate it out that immediately get those envoys down that, that for don't even touch the primeval because even if they invade while you're taking down the envoys if they kill you so what you're still at full mm-hmm. health so it's not going to matter um, so get those down and then you know combo of supers and obviously our heavies um depending on where they are, if they've already spawned their primeval and let's say they're, they've already burned him down a quarter, that's when we go invade, you know, to get the health back up. So we, we, we try to call out when we're going to do things like that. And to me, it, it's, it's a drastic difference when you have a full fire team and everyone knows their role and you're constantly communicating versus, all right, it's two of us. We got a couple of randos in they're running, they're invading with 15 moats and they get instantly <laughs> shot by sleeper and lose them, you know, stuff like that. So it, it's, and it's one of those things, like, again, talking about the moats, let's say I have 13 moats. I'm calling out that, Hey, I'm at 13. I'm going to go for 15. All right, let's set it up so I can get two more out, you know, and then I'll run over. And if someone knows that I'm sitting on 13 and I'm trying to get 15 and say, they've just thrown a blocker up, then someone will like, all right, I'll go take care of the blocker while you get those last few moats. So then I can go over, cash them in immediately before they try and come in and invade, you know, just things like that. Obviously 
look at the uh, look at the bars at the top. So if like if they're just sitting on a ton of moats, we're already past 25 and we can invade. All right, let's go over and invade <laughs> so we can try and, you know, take out their moats and they have to start over. Things like that. But again, that's what makes it so fun for me is having just those coordinated communication moments where everyone is working in sync. And I mean, when we're doing that, just going up against random teams, like we're playing last week and it was so funny because we're playing with K-Dub and my son and K-Dub was like, Hey, I just got to get a bounty. You guys want to come help me? Sure. We (laughs) wind up going on, like, I think it was like a 12 game winning streak or something crazy like that. (laughs) Cause we just kept saying, well, we'll just play until we lose. And we just kept winning, 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 winning. And (laughs) we were getting to the point where crushing them like 75 to six and just crazy scores like that. Because we knew when to throw down the blockers. We knew when they're sitting on modes. We're invading at the right time. And then when the prime evil is up, we had our strategy down on how to take them out, which again, is is something and that's another thing with a titan hit melting point on them burn them with that i'm not a hunter so i can't do all the hunt, the fancy hunter stuff with tethers and all that but you know do that and then you know coordinate that kind of thing like i even put up a video where k-dub hit the melting point called it and i was like perfect and i was the arc titan i did my superman thing right into the prime evil <laughs> burned down like his last third of health like instantly you know things like that so yeah, it's it, dude. It's it's a lot of fun, man. Because there's just so many different ways to approach it. But like I said, it really just comes down to communication at the end of the day, and that's to me that's what makes it so fun. Yeah, Gambit's gonna create a lot of really good shot callers with how it kind of steps everyone into that role in like baby steps. Because like Crucible shot calling is much more difficult than gambit shot calling and being able to like call everything out and coordinate a little bit better because in gambit it's like oh there's four places that they can show up or uh and we're all kind of concentrating on the same objectives and it's real simple to be able to like all of like the the overlays and like the ui is really helpful Mm -hmm. and succinct so it's like oh i can look at that guardian and see oh, they have 12 moats or, hey, I can see that they are, you know, they're spawning on beach or they're spawning at steps and it makes out clear call outs like, oh, I know steps because I saw that like when they were, uh, you know, when we were fighting the fallen over there. So I know where that guy might be. It's going to make a lot of good shot callers, I think. Yeah, Yeah, I would agree. You know, sort of in preparation for this episode, I was, uh, you know, reading up, watching some videos, trying to see, you know, what what strategies are emerging. And I saw a a lot of disagreement, not necessarily disagreement, but a lot of different things working for people. And I think one thing that's kind of becoming clear is like it kind of doesn't matter what your plan is or what your strategy is. If you have a plan and you can kind of call those audibles, you're going to do better than if you are free for all in it ever. You know, you're you're solo queuing or everyone's kind of trying to do everything equally, just like having that, having some kind of uh, structure for people to follow along means people are going to be, you know, people know what their job is. I did want to ask one thing, because you talk about sort of having a dedicated moat collector. Um, Match opens, beginning of the round. Are you going to have one person going for that 15 moat, trying to get that first blocker? Are you trying to throw out a lot of little ones? I mean, what's what's sort of your strategy there? Because I've seen, you know, the wave of small ones. I've seen the, you know, really prioritizing those first two big blockers. What's worked for you? We, we do the 10, 10, 5 strat. So get two 10s and a 5. So that gets us a 25 right away. I Because mm-hmm. I feel like it seems to be a little easier to have two people grab 10 versus one grab 15, even if that Mm -hmm. makes sense. And then obviously, you know, you'll, you'll, you'll stumble into five by accident. So you can do that and then have someone that's kind of hanging back a little shooting at medium to long range. So that if a blocker does come up, he can run over and handle the blocker while we're grabbing the rest of the moats, drop that 21. Cause once we got 25, we can invade whenever we want. So if we see them stacking, trying to get to their 25 and not cashing anything in, boom, you send an invader over there right, right away, take out two or three of their guys. They're right back to zero, you know, and, and we're, we're still going. So that's, that's kind of the early strategy that we try to do. But, and it's, it's funny you bring that up because you can tell 
and, and, and I'm sure you guys have had this experience too. You can tell when you're going against another team that's coordinated because we'll have <laughs> yeah. that strategy and we're like, oh crap, <laughs> crap, they, they just did it too. You know, it's like, you know, they're, they're right on it too. And then th- those are like just the best matches anyways, because typically we're both getting our prime evils up at the same time. And it really comes down to who has the most success invading at that point. You know, mm-hmm. that keeps the prime evils health up. And we've like I have to shout out to my son because he had the most epic thing when we we're playing one time where we we're way behind and they literally were about to it, it was like just an, a sliver of health left on the prime evil. He's like, I'm going to go invade. He took out the entire team and got the health back up. And then we came <laughs> back and won. I, I swear to God, I wanted to just cry right there. <laughs> There's nothing more satisfying and then like going through the portal and like seeing them all working their way to the bank and you're like, oh my God, I'm going to oh, be able yeah. to snake yeah. them <laughs> yeah. off of the bank as they are like distracted because like not everyone has a scuff controller it can do both at the same time. So they're trying to deposit. Matter of fact, one of you guys tweeted a tweet tweeted about that. I mean, maybe it was you, but tweeted about doing that. That happened to me. I'm literally oh, about I let to, people get close. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm literally doing the button animation to drop 15 and got sniped right out of it. I I almost threw my PlayStation in the trash. I'm like, I don't want to play this anymore. <laughs> there's there's something to be said. Like, I think one of the things that's most interesting to me is like literally just the the first opening seconds of the match when you're rushing towards that first spawn. You're collecting that first round of moats, and literally that first team to do the first deposit and get that first blocker in place. That people are, I think, mechanically just starting to improve at kind of how efficiently they're moving in the map. And then once they have enough, like they're getting to deposit those. And knowing that there's there's going to be times where you're the first person to deposit, you're sending those moats in, and there's someone on the other side who's like just a split second behind you, but you just got it in. And that kind of tempo that you can set early on, like that mm-hmm. can set the whole tone for the match. Yeah, completely agree. Yep. Got to uh, got to get your Titan skate going. Pick <laughs> your out. I wanted to ask about the uh, the maps, or at least talk about them. And we only have three so far. I think there's a secret fourth one that I'm assuming is, I don't know, maybe maybe Dreaming City related. But we've got yeah. Emerald Coast, Legion's Folly, and Kell's Grave. What do you like about the three of these, or what what stands out and sets them apart? Even though the structure is kind of the same. Okay, I cannot think of the name of it. And this isn't a like. This is, I absolutely hate it because some of my worst fails is on this map. It's the <laughs> one, I typically I always seem to get the hive on this one. But this is the one where it's the platforms and there's like, if you fall, you know, you're, it's like an instant death. God, I can't think of the name yeah, of the it Kells, right Yeah, the Kells Grave. There you go, the, that one. And the Reef. Yeah, I, that, I one's, absolute, that one's I absolute, nasty. <laughs> I hate that one. I absolutely hate that one because I have some of my just <laughs> ultimate fails have been there. I mean, overall, though, I, I, I think the design of them have, have, are pretty good. Um, like you said, it's only three right now. I would assume mm-hmm. that we're going to get a Dreaming City map. It just makes sense. I, I, I hope that's just something they're sitting on. And, you know, maybe by October or something, we'll, we'll get that. And then probably that'll be it until uh, till early next year or something like that, potentially. But yeah, I mean, I, I think they're designed well. I mean, it's, you know, like you said, as you start to learn the map layouts, you find the quickest ways to get to the other side. You know, once you've you've cleared a trash mob on one side and all right, now they're spawning over here. What's the quickest route to get over there? So I'm I'm really starting to learn the layout of that. And then like even when you mentioned with the, the invader spawning in, you know, getting that call out of knowing that area. He's at the beach. OK, I know exactly where the beach is or he's at the steps. All right. I know where the steps is. So, you know where he's spawning in from and where to look look and what what barrier to get behind so you get body shotted by sleeper things like that so it's 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 good it's good like again i i can't complain i've been tempting divorce playing this game every night so honestly <laughs> must be pretty good. i like to do a quick public service announcement for the uh i guess it's legion's folly uh there is a portal on that map to take you from steps to drill. Yep. All the and time. people never notice it. And they run all the way from steps to drill. Mm-hmm. When you just jump through a little part, it's, it's blue. It's up in the corner. Like just jump through that. Don't always jump through that unless 
Like if it's at uh, what is the other one called out for that map? Uh, base. Yeah. yeah. If it's base, don't go through a portal. <laughs> don't if get launched drill, to the other side. Another through. another tip with that one: if you're carrying, like, let's say I got 15 moats and someone invaded, so obviously I'm trying to hang back, and you know I don't want to engage them directly. I will go over to that area. And mm-hmm. if the call out is he's coming towards me, as soon as he gets close there, I go through to tell, I go over there and I'm instantly over to drill. It seems like nine times out of 10, they're not smart enough to follow me through there. So that's, that's one way <laughs> to get away, get away from them when they're doing that. <laughs> now that you said that they will be. <laughs> yeah, I know. Right. <laughs> oh. oh, we're in the, we're in the sweet spot right now where you're mostly playing against people who are, uh, Let's let's say have not been as dedicated to learning <laughs> these things in the first two weeks. Not as invested, yeah. There you uh, go. Here's a, my little hot tip with those with those things. It works really well on Kel's grave. Uh, if you like Dawnblade, it's a great super for invading. But Phoenix Dive is really dope because you can take a little boost and then usually throws you all the way over the bank. But all you have to do is Phoenix Dive straight down and you get a speedy little jump right to the bank. And deposit your moats, and that way you don't get thrown halfway across the map. I don't know if it really cuts down the time, but it looks fun and it feels cool. So just do it. Style points. Yeah, Those I'm count, all about right? style points. All right. Well, we've got a lot of gambit in front of us. I love, I love the thought that they've um, Bungie has realized that we're going to burn through content as fast as they make it. So they've designed an entire location that's going to be slowly unlocked that we're hoping includes a, a gambit map. Mm -hmm. Um, but I mean, you know, you mentioned Iron Banner coming up, we've got the raid coming up as we kind of look ahead to this next month. I mean, uh, what, what's calling out to you? I mean, what, what part of the game or what piece of gear, what, what's keeping you going right now? Oh, it's hundred percent the raid. Um, we're, we're going to planning to, I'm not doing a world first, but we're going to plan to try and do it that Friday evening, you know, and through the weekend. But to me, that's always the highlight of destiny to that was that vault of glass early on. That's what kept me in destiny one at the time was the raid. So that's something I'm always looking forward to. Um, you know, they just showed off the, uh, iron banner gear, uh, that that'll be dropping. So looking forward to collecting some of that again, like with weapons and everything, I'm just testing out everything. So any and everything I can get my hands on, you know, I'm trying to get, obviously we know there's, I'm waiting for that secret mission to show up where it's this gun that we don't even know about. And it's, you know, like the whisper or something like that, where we have to figure it out. I'm hoping there's also a, um, oh my God, why am I forgetting the name of it? The one from, uh, from, uh, rise of iron, the uh, outbreak prime. Thank you. I kind of mm. could not remember that. I name want, from, <laughs> yeah. I hope there's I like, a, I hope there's a, an equivalent of that as well, you know, coming out of the raid. Would give us something like a, Taken necrochasm. Yeah, that would be cool. Oh boy, that'd be really cool. But yeah, that, it that's, does. It does scream, scream explosions. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You say yeah. What are, what are the what are the scorn shooting us with right now? Probably going to get one of those those mm-hmm. purple triangle guns or something. Yeah, purple something. I don't know. All I know is it, it pisses me off. When, it pisses me off in Gambit when I get. <laughs> oh, that's another thing with Gambit with the scorn. Why I hate him so much. Say I'm low on health and I'm like, oh crap, let me get out of here. I swear it seems like. All of them just target me. I don't care how far away I get, yep. and I die. It's Swing their little the torches worst. at you. <laughs> yeah, it, the each worst. one has their own like super annoying enemy. Like the cabal and the turrets are the worst. Like if you can't like not, turrets say, or yeah. like the big what are the big ones? The are they hydras? Yeah, no, hydras yeah, on Vex are pretty yeah. are pretty obnoxious. They really slow you down if you don't have the angle. And then the can't deposit. I will say that I've given uh, Cursed Thralls a little bit of a break since Forsaken came out. They're not they're not so bad. They walk nice and slow and their crit points right in the middle. But now that we have Screebs, they're obnoxious and fast. Cursed Thralls, yeah. they're all right. They're yeah. fine. <laughs> oh, I would say one other thing going back to the original question. Another thing I'm looking forward to is to see how the Dreaming City is going to evolve over the next few yeah. weeks. Because that's obviously something they've really Oof. been promoting. Yeah, your guess is as good as mine. <laughs> I, we're gonna finally get to the top of all those mountains. That's yeah. that's guaranteed. Yeah, <laughs> figure out those routes. Well, Paris, thank you for coming back on the show. I'm glad we got a little bit of competition to talk about and uh, two worlds combined. But hey, if anyone wants to find you on the internet, if they don't know where you are, where can they find you? You can find me at gamertagradio.com. That is our podcast. We're a part of Audio Boom. And if you want to just follow me directly, you can find me at 
vicious 696 on Twitter and see the ramblings of an angry old man. It's great. <laughs> Sign me up. They're good ramblings, folks. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show again. It's good to talk again. No, absolutely. Thank you guys for having me. Thank you. You've made it to the end, folks. Outro, outro, outro. <laughs> Sorry. No. No, I take it back. It doesn't work. You've made it to the end, brothers and sisters. <laughs> <laughs> Go to CrucibleRadio.com. Listen to us. Past episodes. Have we ever plugged our past episodes on the podcast? Yeah. Go listen to episode 72. Uh, man. That's we probably were- a good one. On to something, episode 72. Go listen to episode 100. It's my, maybe my favorite. Oh, that is that is legitimately good. Support us on the Patreon. Yeah. We get, get yourself a Patreon. Get yourself and a Patreon. Uh, support, <laughs> support us there. It's it's real easy. And it would be really appreciated. Uh, Andrew super appreciates it, because that's how we pay him. Uh, and you get a bonus yeah, pot on the field. <laughs> bonus pot on the Andrew, field. Andrew, Andrew, Andrew. <laughs> we got bonus pods. We got giveaways. Uh, I got some... I think I got some of these. Uh, what are they? The cart, the the cards from from the GameStop, like the Gambit cards. I don't know. It's got all of the little characters. It's got the barons and all that uh, playing cards. But I think we we'll give those away on our Patreon. So uh, support us. Okay. Get a chance for that. Do it. Bye. Oh, bye. Almost bye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> I'll buy, I'll buy, I'll buy. <laughs> Alright, we're done. Yep, yeah, yeah, show over. Later, okay. sister. Stay, 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 stay. Hey everyone, it's Engineer Andrew here, and uh, this week we have Lost Souls, a good friend of the show. Uh, you can go find him on Twitter. It's at lost underscore souls, S O L S. I uh, hope you're enjoying the music. And if you want to get your music on the show, all you got to do is send an email to crucibleradio at gmail.com. Thanks. What's up, everyone? Bones here. Do you like podcasts? Do you like chill conversation? Well, me and my co-host Swain and Birds put out a bonus podcast every month on Patreon. If you want to check it out and be a part of more awesome stuff, head over to patreon.com crucibleradio and join the squad. See you there.